Now this lesson may be thought of as a basic introduction and also a basic reminder about second order ODEs that are linear and have constant coefficients. In lectures I've presented lots of material about these um, uh, equations, their modelling and their solution methods, but this um, lesson is just a basic reminder or a basic introduction depending on um, whether you've seen these things or not. Now the basic motivation for studying ordinary differential equations or ODEs is re related to the modelling capacity of these, of these um, equations. Our particular interest in this lesson will be discussing this kind of problem here. So the boxed equation is a second order ordinary differen differential equation. The A's, B's and C's are just constants, given constants, and the Y is the unknown function here. So we want to solve this boxed equation for the unknown function Y. And if we're modeling something, for example, like a spring mass system, uncovering the solution Y will enable us to make precise predictions about future states of our system. So that's part of the motivation for studying these problems. Now, I've got three simple cases here that we're going to work, systematically work our way through. So if you sort of compare this with this, you can see, well, in, in case, in the first case, A is 1, B is positive 4, and C is 3. Now, in your book, I might just check that they're, they're the same because um, I just wanted to get, make, make all the roots be negative for um, the spring mass discussion that I'm going to talk about at the end. Okay, in the second case, we would have um, A equals 1, B equals positive 4, and C equals positive 4. And, you know, again, you can find the coefficients there from the third case. Okay, now the analysis for these, uh, for the solutions, involves a special polynomial, a quadratic equation, in fact. So let's um, have a look at the solution methods to these three problems. And at the end, we'll talk about some, some modelling um, relationships as a, as a sort of a basic um, taster for that. Think of a spring mass system, okay? You've got a, a mass attached to a spring, and there's some damping involved. The damping might be due to oil or air resistance or something like this. The A here is, is the mass in your spring mass system. The B is the damping constant. Okay, so a large and positive value of, of B would mean that you'd have a very thick oil that would um, effectively damp um, your, your system. And the C here is the spring constant. So a large and positive value of C would mean a stiff spring. Um, y of x would represent the displacement above or below the equilibrium position at, say, time x. So let's have a look at some of these basic problems and just refresh our memory on how to solve them. So here we are asked to solve this ODE here. And essentially, the analysis changes to the study of a, char a characteristic equation, a special polynomial equation, which is a quadratic equation. So we call this the so-called characteristic equation. Now, in, in some lectures, I've used R for the characteristic equations variable. Here, I'm just going to use lambda. So all I do is take the coefficients, 1, positive 4, and positive 3, and write them as some sort of quadratic equation. OK, so what I can do now is solve this quadratic equation, analyze the roots, and then form a general solution based on the, um, the format of those roots. OK, so we can factorize. OK, so I want something like. Um, positive 3 and positive 1. 
So our roots are negative 3, negative 1. Now, let's just pause for a moment. The roots are both real numbers, and they're not equal to each other. Under this case, the form of the general solution to my ODE is the following. They're real numbers and they're unequal. Hence the form of solution y is the following. Okay, it's just a linear combination of exponential functions with these in the exponent. Okay, so big A and big B are arbitrary constants here. If we had some initial conditions, then we could calculate big A and big B, but we don't have that information here. So that's, that's about as good as we can get it. So big A and big B are constants. Now I can verify that that is a solution for every constant A and B just by testing to see whether it satisfies the differential equation in part A. Okay, does that equation balance? Well, you can verify that it does. Now for part B, we go down a similar route. We form a char the characteristic equation and look at the roots. But for this particular problem, something slightly different happens. Okay, so let's look at the coefficients 1, positive 4 and 4. So let's write down the characteristic equation. So it's going to be um, lambda squared plus 4 lambda plus 4 equals 0. So I can factorise that again. That's going to be something like um, lambda plus 2 all squared. So in this case, lambda equals minus 2 or minus 2, so there's a repeated root. There's a repeated root there. Okay, our roots are real and repeated. And so... Well, real, repeated, uh, yeah, let's just do that. Real and equal, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm trying to say there. Um, and so the form of the solution y is the following. Well, it, it's similar to this, but not quite. It's... exponentials but with this extra factor of x in there. Okay, so whenever you solve the crack characteristic equation and you get repeated roots, then your, the general format will be something like e to the uh, lambda x plus bx, uh, a e to the lambda x plus bx e to the lambda x. Okay? All right, the last one is this one here. So let's look at that case. For this particular problem, we're going to get complex roots. So we've kind of covered all the possi possibilities with these three problems. So again, let's write down the characteristic equation. So it's going to be um, lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 5 equals 0. Ah, oh, sorry, plus 2 lambda. Okay, so now, well, that's not going to factorise easily, but what we can do is, say, complete the square. So, so all you do is you look at the coefficient of the lambda, which is positive 2, take half that coefficient, 1, square it, add it, and take it away. 
Now, that sounds like a lot, but actually I can just break up this 5 and simplify a bit more. I'm going to take a positive 1 out of this 5, and you'll see what happens. Now, those first three terms can be factorised. Okay, so the first one's going to be um, the following. Now, I take that positive 4 to the other side, and I know that minus 4 is just 4i squared. Remember, i squared equals negative 1. So what I can do is take the positive and negative square roots and rearrange. Okay, so if I take the positive and square, negative square roots over here, I'm going to get positive and negative 2i. And when I bring that, that positive 1 to the other side, I'll get the following. Okay, so our roots are complex. Hence, the general solution has, again, a special form. Okay, it's the following form. The real part is just, you know, if the real part was alpha, it would be e to the minus x, uh, e to the alpha x, bracket, the following. You take this number here. Thank you. Okay, again, the big A and the big B are just arbitrary constants. All right, so depending on what kind of roots you have, the general solution varies accordingly. Any questions so far? Well, no. Okay, if that was positive one, okay. If that was positive, I want to be e to the 1x. Yep. Okay, so there are three basic cases, three basic equations. Okay, now, let's just briefly look at the bigger picture, and then I'll show you a little bit of, um, uh, we'll talk about the modelling of each of these three equations. Okay, so, to compute the general solution to this second order ODE, what you do is you, form the characteristic equation, the quadratic equation associated with the problem, and then you solve that. Now depending on what kind of roots you have, you'll get different forms of the solution. So if the roots are real and unequal, then you get a linear combination of exponentials. If you get a repeated root, then you get these exponentials, but remember this extra factor of x in here. And if you get complex roots, well, you also have a special form. So I've left some for you to do. Again, they're pretty, pretty straightforward. But let's have a look at how these equations can be um, interpreted in terms of modelling. Okay? So let's just compare the first two equations. In, in the first part, and you compare it with the second part, well, the um, damping constant is the same, but the spring constant has changed from 3 to positive 4. Okay? And over here, well, the, 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 the mass is the same throughout. The um, damping constant has decreased when compared with these two cases, and the spring constant has increased when compared with uh, the first two cases. So, what I've done is actually use Maple to plot the solutions. Now, what I've done is because A and B are arbitrary constants, I've just chosen them to, so, that, so that all the graphs start at the same point. 
Okay? Now, you can see with the red curve, there's some oscillation going on. That's the, the, third, the third equation that we, that we looked at. Okay? The green curve is the first equation or the first solution that we looked at. Okay? And the yellow curve is the second equation. So, that, so the, the, the second equation, the, the yellow curve refers to what's known as critical damping. The green curve is over damping and the red curve is under damping. 